Greetings from beautiful Borrego Springs, California. Check out those mountains back there. Pretty amazing, right? Well, hey, we're here today to talk about mounting options for your Starlink satellite internet dish. And we're also gonna show you the detailed installation that we did atop our RV with a Starlink mount. So let's get started. All right, guys, it is really hot today. It's about 82 degrees, it's going up to 86. And we're gonna hang out here under this canopy. Selena and I are gonna hang out, do the review with this little fan, try to keep us cool. So let's do it. Okay, an important mounting note to keep in mind as we review these options is that the dish needs to be mounted within five degrees of vertical whenever you install it. So keep that in mind as we review the options. The first mount we'll talk about is the short wall mount for $40. This is for installation on an exterior wall near the top of a gable. As you can see, the one in this picture is mounted on the gable rake board, and I'm not so sure I would install it in this way as it really doesn't have that much support, especially with a wider overhang. I come from a residential construction background and know that these overhangs are typically just tacked on with nails to the gable wall. This installation could be unstable depending on the construction of the overhang. Next up, we have the long wall mount for $45, and this is for an exterior wall installation. You're gonna use this when you need clearance from a roof overhang. This would be bolted into a stud on a gable wall, and then the arm would need to reach around up to allow for clearance above the roof line. The third mount listed in the Starling shop is the ground pole mount, so this is obviously for an in-ground installation, or you could attach it to an RV ladder if you want to. This mount would be good if you don't want to install a mount on your roof and you have plenty of clearance from trees or other obstructions in the area. It's six foot tall. Once it's in the ground, seven and a half foot overall, to install this in the ground, you will need to dig a hole a foot and a half wide by two foot deep. You'll then have to add concrete mix and place the pole in the concrete and let it set overnight. Something to note is that the Starlink dish cable is not rated for underground use. So if you want to bury the cable, you will need to put that in a conduit pipe. Next, we have the pipe adapter for $35, and this is used to attach your own pipe that would have to be a maximum diameter of two and a half inches or 64 millimeters. This would allow for a longer in-ground or other pole mount installation. Our friends from the YouTube channel Grand Adventure use this mount for their own RV. They purchased the 16-foot telescopic Wee Valor flagpole as well as the Flagpole Buddy 2-inch flagpole mount from Amazon and attached it to their fifth-wheel RV ladder. This is an easy way to mount your Starlink dish on your RV with no drilling required. I provided links to both these products in the description below. Finally, we arrive at the pivot roof mount that we installed on our own RV. This costs $40 and it's designed for either flat or slanted roofs. So why did we choose the pivot mount for our roof insulation? Well, it's really the only mount that Starlink sells that will work in an RV roof application. And I did initially think that I was going to install it on the slant of the RV roof and the pivot function would have been nice for that. I could have then plumbed it up nicely. However, I didn't do that. I installed it on a flat section of the roof and it worked well for that also. We had a few things that we had to consider whenever we were looking at the location of installing this mount. And the first would be to make sure that the Starlink dish was not going to interfere with our solar panels. So we wanted to make sure that it wasn't so close to the panels that if the sun came through, it would have a shadowing effect and that would cause a problem with the solar. Uh, the next thing was to make sure that it wasn't going to hit anything whenever it went into a rotation to adjust itself. So for instance, whenever we went to place it near the vent, we wanted to make sure when the vent was open that the Starlink did not hit the vent when it was rotating. Uh, the last thing really that we looked at was to make sure that whenever we placed the mount, we wanted to make sure both bolts were installed into a roof rafter to make sure it was nice and secure. So those are the things that we took into consideration before installing this mount. Okay, now on to the installation of our mount. Step one was to use a stud finder to locate the stud or the rafter board. Next, we traced a base with a pencil onto the roof and marked out the bolt locations. Then we drilled two holes for the bolts using a drill bit that was much smaller than the bolt itself. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that we leave plenty of meat for the lag bolt threads to be able to bite into the wood. 
Then we're going to use some acetone to clean the area inside and outside of the trace lines on the rubber roof membrane to ensure our butyl tape and die core sealant will adhere properly when they are applied. Next, we install butyl seal tape supplied by Starlink. We actually also installed some of our own die core butyl seal tape that we had and we really didn't need to. We didn't realize until afterwards that the roof mount base had a raised area on the sides and this extra sealant really wasn't needed. We will seal this area inside and out with die core sealant. Here we're putting the mount in place and we're going to press down into the butyl tape to make sure the base is well seated. Then we install bolts and washers into the pre-drilled holes and it's really important make sure you do not over tighten these. We're actually going to hand tighten them here with a ratchet to make sure that we don't over tighten them. Lastly, we're going to use a caulk gun to install the Dicor self-leveling lap sealant. And here you'll notice how we completely sealed this entire area around the mount, also sealed inside that area under the mount so that any water that would get in here would not be able to penetrate through and seep through and somehow work their way into the holes that we drilled for these bolts. Well, that's it for the installation. Pretty simple, really, and I know it can be intimidating to either drill or screw into your roof. However, as long as you take the necessary steps to seal those penetrations properly like we did, then you are not going to have any issues with leaks. If you haven't seen our other Starlink videos yet, be sure to check out our Starlink playlist by clicking on the link right here. And if you plan to travel with your Starlink dish like we do, You'll definitely want to subscribe and hit the notification bell below to ensure you are notified each time we post a new update on how Starlink is working for us throughout our travels. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.